is a rabble rouser. Let's give a hand for a rabble rouser. He's a passionate assistant, a raw milk advocate, a biodynamic farmer for over 33 years, instrumental in initiating the national organic and biodynamic certification standards in Canada, leading the battle to legalize raw milk. Talk about raw milk and allergies. Thank you, Michael, for the work you do. I really don't understand why you clapped after his presentation. It was so gloom and doom. The only thing, I, I expected that you would say the good side of GMO is that those people, you know, who, who um, work in that field, they will die out soon. Okay? So this problem will be solved sooner or later. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's, that's part of it, that they don't eat the food. And, and I'm glad we um, give you some thoughts in regard to milk and allergies. Um, I don't know if anybody saw the, uh, on February 27th, on um, the nature of things, Suzuki, he had a whole program, the allergy fix. Did anybody see that? No. Yeah. And the number is actually one uh, in 13. One out of 13 have an uh, allergy. These are the, the, the latest results, okay? Now, Suzuki, <laughs> Craftfully, you know, artfully uh, crafted um, this program based on studies which have been done in Europe, the, for example, the Parsifal study, and also a study uh, with Amish farmers. Why do Amish farmers don't have allergies like the normal people, so called normal people? <laughs> and, yeah, that's right. And, and so they came to the conclusion it had that there's a farm effect because the environment of the farm builds up the immune system and so on. And then, and that connects me to the milk issue. And he says, but how can we provide the people in the city with that farm effect? How is that possible? I mean, you can't have cows in the high risers um, and in the condominiums. Because they didn't build the elevators for cows. That's the problem. Now, the surprising conclusion was that there is actually a well-packaged product which comes from the farm, which has all the ingredients to deal with a lot of allergies. Yeah, and that's raw milk. Which is uh, why I'm battling that now for the last 20 years. Um, with a lot of ups and downs. Usually it's only up and a lot of downs for the government. And even it doesn't matter what, uh, if you lose in court, I think we need to look at the big picture and see, well, how many people wake up uh, through that whole process. And I think it is not a matter of that we physically win a lot of these battles, but it's a matter of are we sticking to what, to like, I admire Jeffrey very much. And he always says, I'm not a scientist, but I collect, collect all the information about the GMOs. And that is the dangerous part for so-called bureaucrats, when there are people out there who are collecting all the information. And I just love the information you both brought, brought to us as well. And, and it is so hard to understand why bureaucrats, regulators, and elected officials don't get it. They don't get it. And that is where our responsibility comes in, and that, that is where activism comes in, and that leads us also into the, into the next, uh, next question, what Rachel will talk about. But I just want to give you, I'm not here to promote raw milk, but I just want to describe you a few things in regards to why people actually coming to us to want this raw milk. There's, there's a lot of people who have uh, leaky guts, um, total allergy problems, um, con to continuous diarrhea, and they get onto the milk, and I have to say there's two kinds of raw milk, so don't mix that up. There's raw milk for human consumption, and there's raw milk for, for uh, destined for, in for industrial processing, like uh, pasteurization, homogenization. Two different products. So you cannot just go to any kind of dairy farm and expect miracles happening there. You need to go to the farm, look at the farm, and see how the farmer, right from the ground up, 
how he treats his soil, how he grows, grows the feed, and so on, it has all to do, if you grow GMO um, feed for the cows, don't expect that the milk will have any kind of healing effect on you. <laughs> and, and that brings, brings the people to us, and it is not, certainly, not um, scientific, um, peer-reviewed um, fa uh, facts. This, these are just, um, they call it urban leg legends, or they call it uh, um, <coughs> hearsay, which is not, um, has no standing in court. And um, I'm always saying, do you know what is the, the greatest evidence of something? And that is when people want it and when people really realize that it is good for you. We had one family um, in, in, in our uh, farm share program and they couldn't nurse and they had no opportunity to nurse. And so they raised their kids completely on raw milk. And the kids were healthy, and then a friend of them, as a doctor, said, well, why don't you go to the hospital and just check them out, just to be sure everything is okay in the development. So they went to the uh, North York Hospital and said, uh, we just want to see how our kids are, uh, are. And the doctor said, they look great, wonderful, nothing wrong with you, you can go home. And then his father, just a really funny guy, he said, I, but I want to tell you why they're so healthy. Oh, no. And he said, because I drink raw milk, the, the face of the doctor dropped and he says, if you don't stop that, I refuse to treat you. And he started laughing and said, well, I don't think I have to come back anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how in the world we are living. Unless we separate ourselves clearly from that stream of, of uh, science, we will be lost, and that is where we need Rachel. Rachel, you will be the next. <laughs> so, these days, 8 million views on YouTube of her knocking GMOs in the teeth. Rachel is the founder of the Kids' Right to Know and the GMO Just Label It campaign. She believes we all have the right to know what's in our food. Her aim is to create mass awareness about the risks of GMOs and to push for their mandatory labeling. Rachel, tell us how you did it. And tell us whatever you want to tell us. We held the first. Um, so my name is Rachel Parent. Um, I'm 14 years old and I've been creating awareness about GMOs and the health and environmental risks ever since I was around 11 or 12. Um, so, <laughs> there are so many issues that our generation is currently facing right now, and it can get super overwhelming, but for me, I just picked GMOs because um, when I was younger, I had, uh, I had allergies actually, and when I was around 11 or 12, I found out about GMOs, and I decided to do some research, and I had, um, like I couldn't drink regular milk, I actually grew up on his milk. Um, and I was sensitive to a whole bunch of different things, I had worse acne, um, a whole bunch of different issues. And as soon as I found out about GMOs, I looked up what they're linked to, and things such as allergies, irritable bowel syndrome, um, digestive disorders, organ damage, um, tumors, and the list goes on. Um, but once I found that out, I was like, wow, I really have to change my diet. I've got to do something about this. So we took the GMOs out of my diet, and within a week or so, my allergies cleared up. And so it was amazing. And I knew from that moment on that it wasn't fair that other kids didn't know about this, and that they were having to go through all of these allergies and symptoms that um, we're hurting them indirectly. So I knew something had to be done. So we created Kids Right to Know. Uh, that way everyone would know about GMOs and everyone would be able to be given the right to know what's in their food by getting GMOs labeled. So that's what we've been fighting for for two years now. Because as citizens, don't we all deserve the right to know what's in our food? Yeah. Yes. 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 So quick question. Um, here has allergies or knows someone with allergies, put up your hand. Almost everyone. 
And that just shows you. Um, I know that when my parents were younger, they told me that they could bring peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to school. Um, and now, in my school, we're not allowed to bring uh, peanut butter. We're not allowed to bring actually any nuts of any sorts, almonds, cashews, anything. Um, we're not allowed to bring egg salad sandwiches because some people are deadly allergic to eggs. Um, we're not allowed to bring, what is it, um, tuna. I mean, I'm vegetarian, so it doesn't matter, but they're not allowed to bring fish because some people are also deadly allergic to that. So it just shows you um, the development of allergies throughout the years is obviously linked to what we're eating. Maybe it's genetics or not, but mostly what we're eating, it's definitely been linked to GMOs. So I believe that we need to stand up for our future at this point because we're definitely gonna have to live with all these consequences that keep coming our way. Whether it be environmental issues of GMOs or health issues of GMOs, we have to stand up, we have to rise up, we have to wake up for our future. There's a march on May 24th. Uh, you can come to our booth and pick up one of these flyers. Um, we're at booth 312. And it'll be a march to protect nature, our bees, butterflies, um, our entire environment, our health, and everything from GMOs. It's the march against Monsanto. So I hope to see everyone there. Stand up and give this next generation a big hand.